It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for my neighbors. It's Mutant Cafe. We're making turkey on a tray. Won't you be my neighbors? It's Friday Night Frights, Terror in the Suburb Night, and this is Mutant Cafe, Turkey TV Dinner with all the fixins. Roll that music! Daddy Man. Hey there, Kitchen Mutants. It is Friday night. I am your favorite Daddy Man in the kitchen, and that can only mean one thing. That's right, it is time once again for Mutant Cafe. Welcome to the show once again this week. It is Friday night TV dinners, and tonight we are actually cooking what you would consider an authentic TV dinner. We are making a turkey dinner with a nice pan stuffing, green beans, and a little apple cobbler to go with. And we are doing that all in 45 minutes, believe it or not. It is Friday Night Frights once again, and we are doing Suburban Terror Night. And so what better way to talk about the suburbs and horror than to talk about that famous classic turkey TV dinner. So we have a ton to do, but we are going to get it all done in 45 minutes. Trust me, it's a little more labor um, inducive than uh, making a TV dinner, but it's much, much better and your family's going to be happy for it. So let's hit those ingredients as we always do. We have a two and a half to three pound turkey breast. Make sure it's defrosted. You're going to need some sage. You're going to need some, um, excuse me, some, yeah, some sage, some cinnamon, some uh, mixed Italian herbs, three garlic cloves, half a lemon, maybe a whole, um, one medium to small onion, two large or three um, standard sized apples, uh, one stick of butter, two halves, we're gonna divide that. You need um, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. You need about a cup and a half of green beans, and I've diced these into about quarters, taking the ends off. You're gonna need a eighth of a cup of walnuts, one quarter cup, uh, brown sugar, one quarter cup of the delicious golden raisins, about eight, uh, six to eight uh, pieces of toast, depending on um, what kind of bread, you know, size you're using. There are varying sizes. I'm using a whole wheat toast. You also need um, two cups of chicken stock, um, salt and pepper, and um, about three stalks of celery. And then I'm going to use um, several of the pieces that come on um, from the inside that have the leaves still attached. And I think that is everything. Yeah, that's everything. All right, so first things first, I'm going to take my ring off because I am dealing with a turkey breast. And what we're going to do, the way we can get this done so quickly, is we're going to come to the underside of that turkey breast. We've talked about... Um, butterflying meat before um, in the episode that we did uh, in Valentine's Day. Daddy Man loves, I think it was Shudder, we did Mandy and I did a stuffed pork loin and we kind of butterflied. All you're going to do is you're going to go in the center and you're going to go at an angle to the left and you're going to just kind of slowly cut, not through, okay? You're kind of going almost sideways. You have your knife, you know, just slightly angled up and you're pulling so now it's flattened out. And then you're gonna do that same thing. Keep rolling the meat, flatten it out, flatten it out, okay? And then roll that out. So see, now you are about half the thickness that you were before, and that makes it nice and flat. It gives you more surface area, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow this to cook very, very quickly. This is just a plain turkey breast. 
get out our baking sheet. And we're gonna take this turkey breast, and it's been patted dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and dry it just a little bit more. This paper towel here. Just give it a, oops, whoa. All right, let's just get that <laughs> patted dry. Oops, no big deal down here. All right, pan down. First pan down. <laughs> when you're moving fast, things happen. Don't worry about it. All right, and all we're going to do is we're just going to lightly salt and pepper this. So just a tiny little bit of salt. Turkey, you know, doesn't have a ton of flavor, so the flavor that you give it is going to help it out. Give it a nice crust. Okay, and then I'm going to take the Italian herbs. You notice I'm not pinching because I have uh, turkey on my fingers. Just a little bit there. All right, and then we're just going to do a dry roast. You should have your oven on um, 450. Apologize that I didn't say that at the beginning. That's it for the turkey, believe it or not. Look at that. So we're going with this three pound turkey right in that oven at 450 degrees. And I know I just moved faster than maybe you can because I knew what I was doing. So let's wash those hands. And that's gonna need about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, wash those hands, dry them off, get all that turkey off. I got a pan going right here. We're gonna start the stuffing already. Okay, right, and I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna put my timer on 25 minutes so we can shock that turkey and make sure it's good to go. All right, let's start with the stuffing. I always say stuffing. I find that stuffing is the more tra traditional term. We've talked about this before. Stuffing is inside the bird, dressing is outside of the bird. So this is actually a dressing. Um, okay, so we're gonna take the crust off. This is already toasted, as I said. And I go, um, you know, like a medium toast, medium to um, heavy toast. Okay, just get those crusts cut off. We're not gonna waste those. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half, and then quarters. All the way through, make sure you're getting that last one. Try not to squish your bread down too much. All right, and then quarters again here. Maybe fifths, you know, you kind of want size of like a sugar cube almost. All right, and the smallness, I would normally go a little bigger if I were doing like a Thanksgiving dinner um, and we have more time and the turkey was gonna be in the oven for a couple hours and we could do the dressing for like the standard 45 minutes. But because this dressing is only getting, uh, you know, about 25 minutes in the oven, we're going to go a little smaller with the cubes. All right. There we go. There's that. All right. Now, let's get that all off to the side, because now we're going to get our onions and celery cut up. We're gonna just do a nice medium dice on this onion. And if you just started watching the show, I'm not gonna talk about how I cut the onion because the people who've been watching the show for almost a year now, a year tomorrow, <laughs> believe it or not, one year for Mutant Cafe. We're not doing anything exciting. Just saying thank you for being with us for a year. How amazing is that? So we got the skin off this onion. You can always tell when it's a nice fresh onion because that skin is tight on here. That's a good thing. Kind of hard to get off, but all right. Nice small dice. We got our pan on a medium heat, heating up, and we're gonna take half a stick of butter right now and go in that pan. Okay, nice small to medium dice. in that pan. 
Don't worry, I've got some breadcrumbs on there. Not a big deal. They're all going in the same pan. There we go. Okay, let's do the second half. It's basically all stuffing is dressing, onion, celery, and then, you know, depending on what your family did does in the stuffing. I think, again, we had this conversation when we did the stuffed pork loin. Everybody does different things. I know there's a southwestern flavor where you use a cornbread or a southern flavor, I should say. Uh, New England, they put oysters in their stuffing or dressing. Um, different berries, different fruits, dried fruits, nuts. We're going real basic with this one because this is mimicking a TV dinner, which is, you know, pretty basic. Nothing against Swanson, <laughs> but I don't want to get too fancy here because we are trying to do, you know, make it taste like that TV dinner that you had as a child. That's what this series is all about. All those yummy flavors that you had as a child redone and much healthier. Okay, there we go. Let's get this stirred around with all that butter. Yum. Nothing like onions, butter, garlic. <laughs> Yeah, I just threw that across the floor. You can always tell the episodes where I'm nervous that we're not gonna have enough time. A little messier, much to Hub's chagrin. Sorry, Hub's. All right, let's hit that celery. You've seen me do celery before. At the bottom half, I tend to cut it either in half or thirds, okay? And then you just slice right up that celery. And for this, we're going all the way up, including the leaves. So keep on going. Then you're gonna get that right in the pan. Okay. Then go ahead and do that with your second stalk and then those little stalks that we pulled out of the center. If you don't have the leaves, it's no big deal. I just think those leaves add a great flavor. Once we get this in the oven, I'll be talking a little more. <laughs> While I'm chopping, I like to pay attention, especially when I'm rushing. You should be paying attention when you're shop chopping, 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 so you're not chopping the wrong thing, like your fingers. Okay, yum. It's already starting to come down, sweat a little bit, loosen up. Let's give it a little bit of salt and pepper. A bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Let's get these tiny ones done. I'm just gonna cut, again, the bottoms. The bottom part is like where it reaches that uh, root part, and so it's really wide. That's why I cut it in half, just to keep it all uniform. Again, leaves right in there. I love that tender little parts. It's not great for like using it for peanut butter, but um, great for flavor. All right, it's cooking down nice. Yum. All right, so let's get some of those dressing flavors that you're used to, which would be these Italian herbs. We're gonna go about an eighth of a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon. Hmm, and see how it's, we're using the same herbs that we used on the turkey, that way you kind of have the same flavor profile going throughout your whole meal. And we're going to do the same with the sage. Okay, I'm going to go a little less sage. I'm not a huge sage fan. And you could definitely use fresh sage in this. It's delicious. Use a little less. We've talked about that before. Fresh herbs, you always use just slightly less. And take the garlic cloves. Give a nice crush. You don't have to worry about these staying all pretty and whole. So I just crush that and see how easy the peels come when you just press down really hard and crush them up. Skins pop right off. Okay. Perfect. Make sure you're stirring. Get all those herbs mixed in. Mmm. Man, it's coming down nicely. Man. Talk about fall. Got cold here this week, and all of a sudden, this meal feels like it was meant to be. Um, check that out. See, it's all getting nice and sweaty down. Okay, let's give this a nice, you don't have to go too small with this garlic those flavors to kind of permeate through the 
whole dish. So I'm not trying to be uniform about it. It doesn't need to be pretty. It's going in a dressing. It's all going to kind of mush together in the oven anyhow. Okay. Just make sure you don't have any big giant chunks. As much as I love garlic, sometimes, man, you go somewhere to eat or you cook and you accidentally leave a big old piece in there. <laughs> Even when it's cooked, it's a little much. Okay. Get that in. Look at that. Your turkey's in the oven and your dressing is almost in the oven. How amazing is that? Okay, I'm stirring that up. Give that one more second. Go just a touch more salt. I'm okay with going a little salty on this because that bread doesn't have a lot of salt or flavor in it. Again, a little bit more pepper. All right, keep going. Get this nice and cooked down. You want those onions to start getting pretty translucent. Same thing with the celery, nice and soft. There you go. Oh man, that's sage, delicious. So thanks again for being here Friday night. This is week 52, 52 weeks of Mutant Cafe. I only took two weeks off. I looked back and all my, it's kind of been fun once I realized we were at a year, kind of looked back. I've only had two weeks off this year. Took the week before Christmas and the week of Christmas. Sort of. I did New Year's Eve, so not even the week of Christmas. Sort of the week of Christmas. We'll do New Year's Eve again this year. That's going to be a traditional thing with my bestie, Courtney. Okay, here we go. And we're at like recipe 60-something, which is pretty amazing. Couple episodes had some double things going on. Excuse me. You know, for horrible, we did like uh, three recipes that night. We did a Friday the Thirteenth and uh, episode. Uh, excuse me, movies one through four. I did a recipe, four different recipes that night throughout, in between every movie, with uh, Mutant Theater. How much fun was that? It was so much fun. God, that feels like forever ago. It's like last September. Time flies, y'all. Time flies and time goes super slow <laughs> at the same time. How is that possible? All right, the bread is going in. We are nice and translucent there. This bread is going to go in. Let it soak up some of that butter and that delicious herbs. Hear that rain? Nice, gentle rain. Love rain. Make sure you're cooking. Cooking is so therapeutic to me. So let's just get that all mixed in here so that bread starts to soften up a little bit. As soon as that butter and those onions hit the bread, it starts to just kind of moisten up. Okay, nice and mixed in there. See how it's turning out? Look at that. No knocking the moms, but man, they make it sound like Thanksgiving is such a big deal. Not. It's a lot of stuff, but if you plan ahead, and get it done. All right? All right. My mom literally has a full week and a half worth of schedule for Thanksgiving. That way, the day of, she gets to enjoy it. Have some wine, have some fun with the family. But how much do you love these TV dinners? This is my probably, I have two favorite TV dinners, actual TV dinners, you know, in the TV trays. This is one of them. We're going to do another one later this month. Okay, now, <clears throat> now that we have this all kind of mixed together, we're going to slowly add about a cup, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Kind of depends on how um, dry your bread is, or your toast is, I should say. So that's about a quarter right now, and then I'm going to stir. You don't want this to be too wet, because then it turns into a mushy mess. Um, which also don't want it to be too dry because it is going in the oven. Okay. I think we're going to go just a touch more. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, it's about half. And 
again, that's a 450 oven, 425, 450, somewhere in there, depending on your oven. All ovens are different, we've talked about that. Should have a thermometer in your oven. Don't trust your knob. Ovens definitely go off kilter. Okay. Perfecto. Touch more. Done. Okay. Get this one last stir. And then what you're going to do is you want this flattened out, really well mixed, and everything's incorporated. I'll show you here. Get everything down off the sides. Okay, and nice and flat. So you get a nice crust all the way across the top. All right. Get that down. Wipe down the sides there. All right, so there is your dressing. And now it's going to an oven. Okay. That turkey looks delicious already. And it has about 15 more minutes. Told you we're going to get done. Just get this cutting board cleaned off. What you're gonna do, just a little bit of water in this ramekin with the green beans, okay? In the microwave, five minutes. do you've seen me cut a piece of fruit this exact same way hold it nice and tight go down one half I'm not even peeling this down the other half okay so you still got the core nice and intact in there none of the core coming out with this and then just down those quarters throw the core away one more time right by that core down one half down the second half and then down those quarters there you go. Easy peasy. Now, we're going to take those quarters, have them, lay them flat, and then go at about thirds. Thirds to halves, depending on the size. And then we're going to do these nice and small dice. Okay? Like a compote. So get them the quarters, you go half, lay them flat, halves to quarters, depending on the side. And then like that. So easy. Let's get this pan on. It is on. We're going to use half of the remaining half stick of butter, which means you're going about a quarter stick of butter. Right in there. Let that, we're going to let that brown up. All right? You don't want it to burn, but you definitely want it to get nice and brown. Keep going with these apples while that gets brown. Lots of dicing on this episode. We could have called this the dicing episode. And then with this one, you're just going to go in small slices. Okay? And then take three or four of them and then do the exact same thing. Thirds, halves, depending on how big it is. And then nice, small dices. Like that. Any guesses from y'all about what we're doing for Suburban Horror Night? So many options. So many options for horror movies. What is it about the suburbs that make horror so perfect? I think it's the juxtaposition of, you know, everybody feels they're safe in the suburbs and in their homes in the suburbs. Make sure it's not too high. It should be a medium low. Start getting some spritzing like that. Yeah, you're supposed to feel safe in the suburbs, right? So when there's a killer or a monster or whatever, it seems even scarier because it's your safe space. Okay. Look at that butter spattering. Love it. 
brown it up nicely. Watch yourself. We'll get it on your clothes. Butter will sting you. Alright, we're almost done with this. Get some of these apples in there now. Stop that sputtering. <laughs> I'm making a mess today. Sorry, hubs. Such a quick recipe. Alright, keep dicing this up. So if you're following along, we've got about um, five more, I think, recipes to go on our TV dinner series. Can't believe summer's almost over. Such a bummer. Wasn't much of a summer. Here in Chicago, we are a summer city. There's so much going on, and there's a lot going on in the winter. But man, we like our summers. It's just been kind of a bummer. I haven't been able to do anything. Which, you know, the sacrifice, there will be more summers. I keep saying that over and over again. Everyone just needs to be sacrificing one set of summers, or one birthday, or one holiday. There will be many more. I got a little apple left over for this pan. If your pan holds it, go ahead. Okay. These are pretty big apples. Don't want to use this. Use this. Just get that stirred around. Get all that butter in there. These apples cooking down. Okay. And they are cooking nicely. Get nice and soft. They're nice and coated with that butter. They're gonna cook down, get nice and mushy. Seems like a lot right now. As you can tell, I'm not getting stuff out of the pan, but they'll cook down. Cool down, but it's still warm with that oven up at 450. but maybe not quite equal. Let's go like bigger one back here. So use a smaller half. Cut that in half. Squeeze that lemon in there. It's gonna stop these apples from getting brown. It's also gonna add a nice little pop of lemon fresh flavor. Obviously they're gonna brown up because they're in the pan, but you don't want that yucky kind of rotting brown color that apples sometimes get when they're exposed to the air, always get. A little bit of salt. Yes, I know this is a sweet dish, but we've said it before, I'll say it again. Salt brings out the flavor in sweet. Keep cooking this nice down. And you can take skins off here if you're not a fan of the skins. I don't mind the skins, especially when we're cooking them down like this. There's pieces in there. Messy, messy Marvin today. And just keep cooking these down. Yum. Now, once they start, you can start to feel they're softening up. They're losing their shape just a tiny little bit. This pan's up. I, as you saw, I just turned it up just a little higher. So you can start cooking them down now that they're going. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add those chopped walnuts. Not a ton, just a little bit for some crunch. This is basically taking the place of that apple compote or the apple pie that was sometimes in this particular dish. I mean, TV dinners have evolved over the years, different combinations. This is the one I definitely remember. Because I'm old. <laughs> may have been newer for those of you younger viewers. I don't know what they did with the uh, 
turkey TV dinners could have been something completely different as taste changed. They were really different in the 50s. Cranberry stuff, which I don't think people would maybe go for nowadays. Taste change. 50s, they had jungle molds. Oh, one of the series we were doing when we did the flashback to the 50s that didn't make it because of the COVID break outbreak. We were going to do a gazpacho jello. I'll still bring that back, trust me. I got plans for that gazpacho jello. Hey, beautiful. Brown sugar in. Nice and mixed in there. It's going to kind of make your syrup. Yum. You know, apples are nice and sweet, but add in that brown sugar, just perks it up, makes it a little bit sweeter. It tastes like a dessert. Because if you're a good boy or girl, or non-gender binary, <laughs> and you make a clean, happy plate, that's when you get to dig into the dessert. I don't know about you, but my mom used to have to yell at us, do not touch our dessert. <laughs> you still have turkey in your pan. <laughs> Now you're an adult. You can do whatever the hell you want. Eat it first if you want. All right, let's get those raisins in there. Love the golden raisins. You can definitely use the normal, uh, the regular, more common dark raisins if you want. Not a problem. All right, and what we're also going to do, because you probably at this point are noticing you got a lot of juice down in the bottom of that pan. It's all the juice coming out of the apples as they cook. Look at that. The turkey is almost done. Let's give it a check. Probably needs five more minutes, but I always like to check just to be sure. Yep, we're gonna go about five more minutes. Let's check that dressing. Oh, so good. Yeah, we're gonna go five more minutes. Whoops. Timer, five minutes. There we go. All right, so. You'll notice a lot of juice down here. That's what this flour is doing. We're gonna go about a teaspoon of that flour to start, see how that does. Get that nice and stirred around. And that's gonna start interacting with that um, juice. It's gonna thicken it up, make it a nice syrupy. I'm just gonna put syrup in this, but it's so sweet to begin with. I'd rather just use that juice to make a nice little syrup. Okay. Yum, yum, yum. Man, this smells good. Oh, let's not forget. A couple nice pinches of grated cinnamon. Much as you like. I'm doing about a quarter of a teaspoon there. Get that all stirred in. Yeah, see? Now, at the bottom of the pan, I'm not seeing juice, I'm seeing a nice syrup. And that's exactly what we want. Okay. Now, what you want to do, because we did these nice and small, they should be pretty close to being done. Okay. Let's get it nice and stirred around. I'm going to check it out. Look at that. Beautiful. And you don't want to cook it too much because if you cook it too much, it's going to turn into applesauce. Yup, that is perfect. Just a tiny little bite still in the center. Mm. I don't think we need any more flour. Man, can I get more on the table? <laughs> it's a messy episode. All right, perfect dough. What I'm going to do, put this off to the side and let it sit just for a minute. And as it sits, that syrup is gonna kind of gel just a little bit and that's exactly what you want. Okay, perfect. Three things down, one to go. Four things down, I'm sorry, we got the green beans done already as well. There is your apple compo. One more pan, last of that butter. Boink. All that, Turkey stock. All right, that's about a cup. 
and just put an apple in there, which makes no sense. There we go. About a cup. Another half a teaspoon or so of the flour. Just a little bit more of the Italian herbs, which as you know is thyme and rosemary and sage. Grab my whisk. Whisk away. We're making a gravy. We're making a gravy. Just whisk away. Whisk, 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 whisk. The flour and that butter. I'm gonna combine when this heats up. It's thickening up already. Look at that. Nice, quick gravy. And when we pull that turkey out, we're gonna put all the drippings from that turkey right in here. Stir, stir, stir. Now let's let that come up to a boil and that's gonna get nice and thick. I'm gonna clean up this table because we are ready to start plating it up. How did that happen? So quickly. Feels like we just started. Makes four, so you, you have four plates, or I found on mine awesome little TV dinner trays. Stir that around. All right, here we go. Let's get that turkey. Who's ready to see it? I know I am. board. All right, we're going to take those drippings right in that pan. All right, and there is that delicious roasted turkey. I'm going to let that sit for a minute while I grab our delicious, tasty dressing. that. Oh, yum. Okay. Dressing, compo, turkey, gravy, green beans. I almost forgot the green beans. Don't forget the green beans. My mom would not be happy if I forgot the green beans. Here we go. We got all of them. Let's plate this up. Take a fork. Normally I'd let this sit for a minute or two so the juices don't come running out. Just because we're a little time limited, I'm gonna cut this on the bias. Right, straight down. Oh man, that is perfect dough. Look at that. Nice, delicious slices of turkey, oven roasted. Yum, yum, yum. All right, makes enough for four easily. Look at all that. Okay, get these pieces right there. There's your turkey. Delicious, so good. All right, let's get your dressing. Give it a nice little stir. Dressing on the side. Okay, there's your dressing and your turkey. Go a little more dressing, come on. Come on now, let's not be stingy. There's your dressing. 
Get these yummy green beans. Nice and steamed, still a little crisp. I like my green beans, still just a touch crisp. Right? This is a meal for four you just made in like 30 minutes. Maybe just a touch over. There's your green beans. A little salt on those. And finally, that yummy, yummy apple raisin compote right there for dessert. And that, y'all, is the meal. There's your TV dinner. Let's get that gravy on there. Oh, so good. There we go. Y'all hungry? Who's salivating? I am. <laughs> that looks so good. There we go. You just did it. Roasted turkey, dressing, green beans, and apple raisin compote. That is your Friday night TV dinner right there, y'all. Delicious, am I right? Let's get this out of the way. Thank you guys so much for joining me again for Friday night TV dinners. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you again next week for something else equally as delicious. Enjoy this meal, and enjoy the rest of Friday Night Frights. Thank you guys so much for joining me here in Newton Cafe. I will see you next week. Thank you.